Hi everyone, so we're back for the final episode. <laughs> I feel like this has been a, <laughs> a, a drama, a TV drama. Final episode of the Tatter Temple Cigar Box Makeover, right? So remember how in the last video I took a screenshot of um, the box so that I can remember exactly, you know, what, you know, how I had the layout that I pretty much liked, you know, um, so that I can repeat it. So this is what I do a lot. I'll, um, in between the various phases of me working, I'll pick my phone up and take a picture of it so that even when I'm doing collages, just not these kind of things, but I'm collaging or I'm doing some other work where I'm working with elements and I get something I like. I like to take a picture of it so I can remember what that arrangement was. So if I keep on working with it and doing things, I can kind of remember where the stages were so that I can um, get back to it. So here, um, I'm going to make a few changes here. We added two more books. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to, from here, as opposed to having the cigar label, I mean the wine label underneath, I'm going to move it up a little bit. And then as opposed to having this down here, I think I'm going to put it up in this corner because I still want to see some of the flower. And I don't want to, the flowers. I don't want too much of that to get covered. So I'm going to play around with a few things. But pretty much we're going to keep it like that. All righty. So now what we want to do is I want to start off by putting, I'm using my PVA. So I have that over here. and. Um, We'll put some of it just down in a general spot. It doesn't matter because, the, first of all, this PVA is really strong glue. It's going to give me a chance to move it around a little bit, but I don't have to glue the whole thing down and all of that because it is not going to go anywhere. So let's, let's say that's good. And then I'll put this and this down. So this is kind of going to be... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these books in here. I kind of want the books to do. Okay, so I definitely need to get this down in there of the books. So I'm going to use a little bit of the PVA still because it's going to dry clear where the, the glue stick won't. I mean, the um, down here. Sorry about the dog barking. The um, I mean, the, the glue gun won't dry clear, but this will. I don't want that to show through everything. And then I think I'll just take a little bit of the hot glue gun. Let me get this off of here. Just a little bit of the hot glue gun along the spine of the feather. And then we're going to get that kind of down in place like that. That's good. Okay. So now I'm going to put these pieces these books, and I decide I'm going to kind of lean the books on the edge. Because remember, I'm gluing all this in, in place. So I don't want it, I don't want the stuff to move in here, but at the same time, I really want it to look like it could. So what I did is I put glue right on the edge of the book, and now I'm just going to kind of lay it at an angle against the wall here. So it's there, you know. Um, in place and then the same thing with this one i'm just going to kind of lean this one right over top of it the same way so what i'm doing i did it off camera last time sorry i'm just putting glue right here on the spine i'm getting a good amount because i'm not going to see it at the bottom so might as well make sure that it's on there good right so here again like that So already we're good. See? Perfect. I don't think that um, I'm going to have to actually put some, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of this because I can see I don't want that to move. But now that I know where my feather is, I'll put some down there. And then this other glue that's there will then adhere. These need to be closer because I need it to look like it's leaning. Okay, 
it's like it's on the shelf or whatever. Okay, and then this right here is going to go right up in here like that. Sort of right up against the books. Go ahead and put some glue on the bottom of that. Use the hot glue gun. Right there. I'll go there like that. All righty, that's looking good. And then I think the last thing I had up here is I was thinking that I was going to put this book right down like that. And then we just have this to put in. But I don't think I'm going to actually glue this in. I think what I was going to do with this is just put it in. And I guess before I actually glued these in, there was a place for it. No, not so much. i got to figure out how I'm going to put this in. Okay. Maybe I'll do something different. Maybe, maybe. No. I like this. The only thing I'm not crazy about is I'm not crazy about how this did not lean down. So how can I make that change that? Maybe I need to just put something else in there. Maybe that's what it's telling me. Oh, wait a minute. No. Well, let's keep moving. Evidently, I've got to go with the flow. It's not, I'm not supposed to do that right now. Put this book down like right about there. Maybe that's not supposed to go there, right? Okay. So now I'm going to go to this part. Here I'm going to put this under as a, as a bottom piece. I don't really want all this fabric to show. I just really like the idea of seeing the old mattress ticking, you know, so it's just down here as an element underneath. And it also kind of gives a little bit of um, shape for this to kind of lay on top of. So let's see. So what we're going to do next is um let's see so i'm going to just take because i want to put this fabric down here but i don't want it all glued glued um so i'm just going to put i guess a little bit of glue here and then just try to tack it a little bit like that oh that works so i wanted to stay kind of crunched like it is um Put that there like that. And then I'm going to just put a little bit over in this corner. You know, the whole point is I don't want this stuff to go falling out, but I don't want it to be so glued in there that it doesn't look like, I mean, I still want it to look like, you know, it's not falling out, right? But I still want it to look like it's a box where it's just, you just open it up and everything's casually laying in there. That's the goal. That's the goal. So now we're going to take this little perfume bottle here and uh, and I want things to feel like it's resting on other stuff so that you can be viewed flat, but it also can be viewed like if it were standing up, like if it were standing up, it would be like it were a shelf. So things are kind of like in there, but uh, you know, like this could actually be resting on this type of thing, but yet I can still... So the goal also for me was for it to work flat and standing up. That was the other thing I was kind of thinking about with this whole thing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, I think I should use the PVA on the bottom of this bottle. I find glue sticks are good for paper and fabric. They'll bond over the long haul. But sometimes like glass and things like this, that's why even that shell I had put down with the um, with the PVA because I know that the PVA, once it dries, is going to be strong. And I just want to put that little glue spot down there. But like once this dries, that's not going to go anywhere. Perfect. So let's see. So now I'm going to just put a little bit of 
um, glue on the back of this. And then we're going to put that, we'll kind of lift the fabric up a little bit so that it doesn't, there. This cork is lightweight, so it's not like it needs to, I'm going to hold this just to see it won't fall out. But it'll look like it's laying there, kind of casual like. Now let's get this flower. I kind of have this little spot so it'll kind of lay and hug into this fabric a bit like that. And then this is the bottle. So let's get this bottle in here next. Um, and I feel like I want to do the same thing. I want to put glue on the bottom. I don't know. Am I not supposed to put my dropper in here? But I want my dropper. Maybe like that. Okay, maybe like that. Okay, but now will I be able to get my bottle in? Nope. But the bottle definitely goes here. So let's get the bottle in. <laughs> and I'll put a little bit of glue on the back of the bottle. So I have, because it, it'll have the PV on the bottom. So I want that here on the bottom. Then I really want so that'll hold in place. Because when the glue sets up, see I have the glue kind of like it's in the fabric and it's on the bottom shelf, that glue. So when it dries, it's going to dry clear. So we're good. All that's going to dry clear and it won't move. And I just put a little bit of PVA, I mean, glue stick on the back so it's crunching into that fabric. And we're good there. Okay. Now we got to get our cohiba in here. This has got to go. So... Let me just put a little bit there. I'm so glad I found this little cigar. So really, I'm happy I found that. That's like so perfect for this type of lady who had the treasures in this tattered temple. This could definitely be my, I think this is like autobiographical. Mm -hmm. Or is it biographical? Which one is it when you're still biographical, I guess, when you're still alive? So that's good. I sure wish. I guess I'm not supposed to put this in here. What do you guys think? Oh, I'm so not happy about not knowing what to do there. Okay, so I don't think I'm I'm gonna use the which way I'm gonna use the uh PVA. I think it'll be softer in the long run on this um flower. Like I don't really want it to to dry it out or do something weird like maybe the glue gun would do. I'll put that in there. Okay, so this is looking good. And I had these two things. So originally I was going to put this thread in there. So remember I had that as a part of the original one, the thread. And maybe I should put the thread in there and don't worry about the dropper, eh? Maybe the dropper just is not supposed to go with this whole thing. Because it, it, it just didn't work out, right? So, well, wait a minute. Maybe that's where it's supposed to go. <laughs> oh, I want my dropper in here. Maybe it's, that's cool. I like that. And it kind of connects the books and everything. I feel like I want to stick some other fabric down. Oh, wait a minute. I had a little bit of this pink, didn't I? I feel like I want to stick something down, like in between these books. Like just fabric kind of trapped and yeah, just to kind of give it this extra little something. Okay. I like that. Just softens this up a little bit. Well, I think I like that there. And then the spool fits perfectly, doesn't it? 
because that was the one we originally had in the very, if you know, the very first video I was kind of dealing with. So I'm thinking what I'll do is, this is a vintage um, thread spool. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of get it so that it sort of goes right over the stem a bit. Sort of holds that in place and it kind of keeps the stem from just floating. And get rid of some of these glue pieces. Okay, that's good. Except for it's supposed to be on an angle. I don't want it to look like so straight, straight. So I gotta put a little bit more glue down there so I can just make it. Let's go that. Need some more glue stick. Let me see if I can direct it to get that to go where I want it to go. Okay, better. I certainly didn't want it to go straight across the bottom like it was going. That doesn't work. That doesn't look right. Okay. So now, okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right there. I like it right there. I don't know, I just feels like it has, what I like about that is that like between the cigar, which, you know, a woman can smoke, I smoke cigars, <laughs> and this sort of dropper, it kind of has like a masculine element to it. Like maybe she, you know, could have been a, a scientist or, I mean, you know, she could have been a doctor or just even a, um, a midwife or someone who worked with herbs and home remedies. I mean, it just, you know, this has a lot of implications. It's one little piece for me. That's why I don't want to get rid of it. And I like the juxtaposition of this type of more scientific type of thing, along with like thread, you know, piece of flour, things like that, that indicate the one, you know, the, the fact that she also, been a seamstress or, you know, just darn things around the home or whatever. So we have all these mixtures of elements, which I love. So this is going to end up going right there. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it. And uh, I was supposed to find that spot, right? Perfect. Okay. Let's see, I think we're done. Can you believe it? Oh, I love it. So everything is in place, even though things are still drying, it's really pretty good. Everything's holding in there. So everything looks like it's just laying there. It looks like you could just pick any bit of it up and just take it right out. But yet we know that, let's make sure that, yay, nothing falls. Cool. Okay. So everything is nice in place because we used either glue gun, which will hold like on the corks and on fabric. Glue guns are great. Um, but on the bottom of heavier things like these bottles and stuff, the PVA will last a lifetime. We don't have to worry about it. Um, the books have the glue gun. That's fine because that's paper to paper. So you can pretty much see how I did everything to really get it to hold in place. So it, what I love about it is it looks like a drawer, you know, just like this little tuck away. And we, you know, we did all the, the aging, but it also looks like, um, you know, it could be a cabinet of curiosities. Let me see if I can so you guys can see it like that. So it could be a cabinet of curiosities and it could stand up like this, right? So we could actually display it. We could display it as a wall piece um, or in an easel or something like that where we could, let me see, I have an easel right here. So if you even think about how you might want to display these, pull this off, this is the Seth After Box he gifted me. So 
You can always like get one of these easels. I think I got this one from um I don't know, Michaels or somewhere like that. But look how cool that looks. So you know, you could have this sort of display. I'm having a hard time showing you guys. Let me just do it like this. Okay. So you could have it displayed like this. And of course, ours has this little slide in piece. So, you know, oh, that works well because it kind of catches on. Can you see how it catches on the top of um, of this piece here? So it kind of, that displays nicely. That's cool. Let me, let me step back so you guys can see it. So that displays nicely. Um, you can see my softbox, sorry. Um, see, I'm still working on that pile of papers in my basket, organizing my junky studio. But um, so that works nice. So that's an idea if you want to sort of think about how to display it, right? Um, it also can, you know, put up a, a hook on it, hang on the back of the wall. But I like this. I really like this. I think I'm going to be keeping it on one of these for a while and enjoy it. Um, so that's what it looks like. It's kind of hard to see it now. So let's take this and move it out the way. Alrighty. So there's our tattered temple box finished. Finally, this was like really a birthing process for me. You guys have watched me because I wanted it to have this kind of feel. I don't want it. I don't want to create something that looks like, oh, everything was just put in there perfectly. That's there, that's there, that's there. That's just not my style. I want it to look random. I want it to look like this is just a random box of a collection of a lot of different things that totally just old, just found objects that each little thing has a meaning. Nothing's planned, but yet everything flows together and this little box tells a story. And that's what I was going for because I really had never done one of these and I just wasn't sure what strategies I needed to pull together. I love that old to make to really pull this off. And so the key is to try to have as much old stuff as you can. Like as many like little old bottles like this that you can find. Of course, old wine corks and labels. You can tell this is an old looking label. It doesn't look like a new. See, it doesn't look like a new wine label. So that's good. You know, it has an age look. All these covers and stuff from coming off of old books or fabrics that have been, you know, dyed really helps. Um, this old fabric in there, that sequin fabric is perfect. Um, and then even the bottles, this is a new bottle, remember, but we dyed the label and made the label old with some of this, um, my fingers are sticky, sorry with some of this um, echo dyed fabric that was the avocado. And then this old thread that looks old. You can tell by the color and everything. So just finding some of that. So, I, and this feather is old. You can tell the feather been around for a minute. So go and look in your old box of stuff and find stuff that already has a certain amount of age to it. That way, the trick I think to this is not having to make everything look aged. It's one thing for us to try to age this bottle up a little bit, you know, um, things like that. But I think the more that you could have that's already old or dried or has some, I mean, like these flowers, these roses, I think my daughter gave to me maybe about three years ago and they're over in a vase dry. And I just picked a piece off. Well, these are like, it's been dried for three years. So at least that already has a certain age to it. So that's the trick. I think that's what I've discovered. So my walk away with this is to find as many old things as you can to start pulling together to tell your story. Um, and then the things that we do make kind of bring that age factor in, make sure the color palettes and stuff work. Um, and, and then really try to work on your placement. So things just look really random. They don't look like too planty, planty. I think that's the other thing you have to play with is to get it so it doesn't look everything is like neatly put in place. Um, and then the old wallpaper and stuff, that helps. And then the way we made the box look old. So I think all of that helped. But I think the, the biggest walk away is to definitely, definitely, definitely find as much age stuff as you can. And then, you know, um, make it accommodated to your box. 
All righty. Well, thanks again, everyone, for joining me here on Patreon and supporting my projects. I really, really can't thank you all enough. Each and every one of you just means world to me because it allows me to not only kind of spend time with these kind of projects um, because it gives me a place and a focus to share them. Um, and it allows me to explore in a way that I can share with you all and help, you know, together us working together. It helps to kind of, you know, uh, move through some of the dynamics of the way we create and how to create authentically. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this tattered box series. I'd love to see what you, how your boxes are looking and I definitely will be making more of these for sure. All right. Love you guys. Take care and, uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.